Welcome back to part two in my video series on improvisation for the guitar. I'm only really gearing it to nylon string guitarists or classical guitarists because partly through my own experience and those that of many of my students, a lot of guitarists are intimidated by the thought of improvising on a classical guitar. The fear comes from a confidence in being able to read dots on a page, uh, mainly notation, and the idea of being able to come away from that security blanket and sit down and just say, okay, make something up, improvise. Quite a few years back, improvisation was just a no-go area for many musicians. However, those that applied it to their playing, it gave them a much greater understanding of uh, the structure of a piece of music or being able to, if they made a mistake, for example, they'd be able to find their way around it, understanding the harmonies and the melody. And that's where sometimes some people feel a little bit intimidated by improvisation. It's about the harmonies. So please don't be intimidated by it. It's actually once you discover it, it's one of the most exciting things to be able to do, to make music and um, make up your own music, world premiere performances every single time. Now, I'm going to give you an example of how we can make it as simple as possible. Let's take one of the basic chord sequences there is. The turnaround progression, we're going to do it in C major because we don't have any sharps or flats and that makes it nice and easy. So I'm going to show you how we're going to use a simple chord sequence. So if you've got two guitarists, one of you can play a C major chord. We know a C major chord. There are many ways of finding out these chords if you don't know them. Um, just Google the names of them and they'll come up with chord sequences or charts for you to be able to read. Make it a D minor, that's quite a nice chord, and we're going to give it a G7. This is our dominant seventh chord, dominant meaning the fifth, so this is our five seven chord. Now, in the key of C major, let's just give a brief understanding of how this works. If I take the scale of C major, we've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. All chords are based on basically a group of notes played on top of each other. That's what makes a chord. It could be any grouping of notes. Any grouping of notes played together become a chord. Break those up and they become arpeggios or broken chords. Let's take our triad. Tri meaning three, our basic three notes. The first note C major scale is C. So a triad above that would be C, three notes above that, C, D, E, and then E, F, G, five notes above that, so C, E, G. That basic triad, put those notes in any order and you've got yourself a chord of C major. If we put that triad above each and every note of our major scale, we'd have C major, do the maths for you here. C major, then the next chord would be a D minor chord. The next chord would be an E minor. F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished. And back to C. Now that B diminished, some people think, hmm, I don't know diminished chords, don't worry about it. We're going to only use the chords 1, C, Six, which is the A minor. A minor. We're going to use, let's use two, another minor, D minor. And we're going to use the G major, but like I said before, I'm going to make it a dominant seventh. So I'm going to make it a seventh, not G major, but G7. So we now have this chord sequence, which goes like this. We've got C major, A minor, D minor, G7. Let me put that sequence down, just simple strummed. I'm going to loop this a few times. So we've got C major, A minor, D minor, G7. There it is. C major, A 
minor, D minor, and G7. Now I'm going to make it an arpeggio. I can add to that as well. So you could put a different right hand pattern. So what I was using there was P-I-M-A. P meaning your thumb, index, I, M, middle finger, A, annular finger. And what I'm doing in the right hand is the thumb's playing one bass note, usually the root note of the chord or the named note of the chord. Index finger is playing on the third string. Middle finger is playing on the second string. And our annular finger is playing on the first string. Now this allows us to play all combinations of chords. I'm going to stop that for a second because while I'm on this, I might as well discuss this. If we took P, I, M, A, M, I, that would be three beats in a bar, one and two and three and could also be six, eight time. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, eight time would have emphasis on the first and fourth bit of a lilt, whereas three, four time are three groups of two, three quavers in a bar, so three crotchets in a bar, but that would be six quavers in a bar, so one and two and three and one and two and three and, don't worry if you don't know, quite get that at the moment, follow it back, it should make sense, so we've got, that would be three beats in a bar, now what we most Popular music is based on four beats in a bar, so let's make it a four beats in a bar. We just need to add on an extra beat, so two quavers. We could do that with an extra PI, so we have a bit of a bass line working out. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Nice pattern when we play that through with that C major sequence, we've got. very nicely. We can also build up our dexterity in the right hand by using P, I, M, I, A, I, M, I. Let's put that into practice. You can feel the bass lilt. So, we can use all different combinations. We can use. Works beautifully. P A M A Y A M A. And we have all different combinations. Write them all down. Or have a look at my website. I've got some tutorials on this as well. And it will give you a good idea. So, getting back to our loop here. We have that sequence. Now, that chord sequence has every single note of the major scale. So, in theory, therefore, we should be able to play any note that isn't a major, isn't a sharp, doesn't have a sharp or flat. And it will work with these notes. Let's try it. C major scale, one octave major scale, starting up in the fifth position. That's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. The reason I'm playing it up here is because it's nicely in the pattern. And this is a transposable shape. Transposable meaning that we can move it into any different key with the same combination. Okay, let's take it back to the first position. We don't have to start on our root note. So let's, good way of practicing our uh, the way I do it with my students, I start with an open G. So G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Try those notes. Don't forget, you can always play them the same note more than once. What 
I would suggest is try playing along. I'm using a loop pedal here and uh, it works very well for me. One of the joys of improvising is you can come up with a sequence. I'm going to use now, show you how you can move it on a little bit further. I'm going to use a chord sequence using one of the right hand patterns that I used earlier, but I'm going to embellish it, use open notes, open chords, jazz chords, harmonies, all of the notes are still part of a C major scale sequence. So you can come up with something a little bit more interesting and improvise over the top. This is using my Boss RC30 loop pedal, which I just love. Here we go. up the first string. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.